Hey guys, Paul here with Patek. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a brand new Logitech product, and it is the Craft keyboard that you see here uh, in front of me now. And what's interesting about it is this new uh, crown dial. And when it, it first came out, honestly, I didn't know anything about it. I was kind of interested in the MX Keys keyboard, but uh, one of the guys at Logitech had mentioned that the Craft keyboard is their top of the line premium keyboard. And you know, when I kind of explained to him I'm a bit of a power user, um, he recommended I take a look at this one. So the keyboard and the mouse that I'll look at in another review have been provided by Logitech. So uh, full disclosure there. But just to give you some perspective, my all-time favorite keyboard is this uh, Logitech uh, K750 Solar keyboard. And I've had this for eons now. I use it with my Apple TV primarily, but I love it because it doesn't have the number set on the side and I, I don't really need that anyway for the, the kind of stuff I'm doing. Um, also, I have the bigger brother. You can see it in behind me, the newer K750 Solar keypad. And uh, both of them are great keyboards. Uh, ha have nothing but good things to say about them. And I'm probably gonna date myself here, but I'm also a proud owner of this little guy here. So I was really intrigued when the uh, Craft keyboard came out because I adopted one of these, I purchased one of these new lock devices for my Apple computer years ago and uh, really enjoyed playing around with that and, and using it. Uh, the one thing I felt about the new lock dial was that it was a little bit cumbersome. You had to do quite a bit of programming to get it. But uh, I've been playing around with the Craft keyboard for a couple of weeks now. I've been thoroughly impressed with it. And so we're going to take a look at it in this video. Let's get to it. Okay guys, so let's see if we can get some of the housekeeping stuff out of the way first, and then we can get into a demonstration of the keyboard itself. So first of all, the packaging, um, the, the price as of b &H website today is $169.55 USD, which is about $225 Canadian plus tax. You're looking at $250. So this is definitely, make no mistake, this is a premium product for sure. Um, the packaging is premium, uh, without a doubt. You know, really nice cardboard box, good plastic insert here. This thing is very well protected uh, if it's being shipped to you, uh, for sure. And on the inside, you've got a USB to USB-C uh, cable, plus your unifying receiver, a little instruction manual, you know, the usual paperwork, another plastic insert here. And the keyboard itself comes in a nice plastic sleeve. Of course, I took that off and threw it away. But um, so all in all, this is a premium keyboard for sure. It's a combination of uh, metal and plastic construction really well designed, uh, beautiful to look at. It's a nice space gray color, so space gray plastic, a darker plastic on a, um, a space gray metal. And, uh, you know, just a really nice looking keyboard all around. On the underside of the keyboard, you've got rubber feet. The one thing that it doesn't have is little tabs that fold out to elevate the keyboard. Um, so far, I haven't really needed it. I was kind of thinking I might put a couple of felt pads on the two. Uh, upper ones if I wanted to raise the the back side of the keyboard up a little bit, but so far I haven't really had the need for it. Um, the keyboard itself definitely has some heft to it, like when you put it down on the table, it stays put and doesn't move, which is kind of nice. Um, so maybe that's one of the reasons I'm thinking about using the felt pads on it, is just to, so that it slides easier on the tabletop, but uh, it definitely stays put and uh, very easy to use. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is take a look at the crown dial here. And the way to do that, I've just jumped into Photoshop here. And so I'm just using the cursor tool now. But probably the, the thing that I'm going to do the most with the crown dial in Photoshop, and you notice that I, as I keep touching it with my finger, um, it just jogs, toggles through the different functions. So if I come down here to uh, the dodge tool, and I want to, oh, I'm on exposure. So I'm gonna turn my exposure on the dodge tool way down, probably oh, somewhere around 20, something like that. Tap it again for size. I can change the size. Uh, the hardness, uh, about 38, so that's fine. Let's pump it up to about yeah, 38, somewhere in there. 
And then, so here's an image that I want to do a little bit of dodging on, and I can use this tool and just come over and take that sort of bronze look off the uh, young man's face here. Add a little bit of highlight there on the nose. Come down the side like so. Yeah, like that. And then I might want to come over and do a little bit of burning. And the same thing, I switch to the burn tool and right away I can toggle through uh, my size, hardness, exposure. And for the burn tool, uh, exposure is at 14% now. You can see up here on the left hand side. So yeah, so you can start to see how this tool becomes a tremendous asset, especially in programs like Photoshop. Let's try the paintbrush here. So the paintbrush, you know, you just touch the dial and you've got size, hardness, opacity, and flow. So let's select a nice size here, something like this. And I will just pick a nice pink hue here. And let's add a layer. Put a little bit of pink in the clouds there. And we'll just play around a little bit and knock the uh, opacity down but uh, I could do that with the tool here so let's uh, let's go to history and go back to the brush tool we'll go back one layer and we'll pick up our brush tool only this time hardness opacity 100 percent we're going to dial it down to uh, Let's try 10, and we still have our pink color, so now I can come over. So it's not hard to see how this tool can be a real asset for somebody that's using, doing a lot of retouching of photos the way I do. Um, you know, I'm just playing around here. I wouldn't do this in a, in a real portrait, but you get the idea. Tap it again. And I can make adjustments to my flow, can knock the flow down. There's 16%. So let's just take it back to a new layer here. And that drops it down even more. So I'm just applying a real subtle uh, pink hue here across the sky in the background. So yeah. I think for sure you can have a lot of fun with this tool. This would definitely help my uh, productivity in Photoshop, that's for sure. So one of the things you can notice as I'm typing away here is that the, the sound from the keys, um, you're getting a clicking sound, but it's a very low pitch sound. So I wouldn't just describe this as a silent keyboard, but it's an absolute joy to use. Um, it's the next best thing, I would say, to a silent keyboard. You can probably tell, I mean, I'm a pretty good typer. I type with all my fingers, um, but I tend to smack the keys pretty good, um, you know, for certain keys. But um, the ones that you want to pay attention to are just the, you know, the average garden variety keystroke. And I think that's the tone, that's the, that's the ideal tone that you're getting from this keyboard. And like I say, it's just a joy to use for sure. Another nice thing that you'll notice about this keyboard is that um, the keys themselves have little dimples in them and that goes a long way towards a good tactile feel and you're not really guessing uh, which key you're hitting. So it just gives you that extra little bit of reinforcement uh, and all these tiny little things add up to increase productivity. Notice how when my hands move towards the keyboard, the backlight illumination automatically turns on. That's a really nice feature as well. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, six or seven reasons that you might purchase 
the Logitech Craft keyboard. Well, there's one reason right there, this nice backlighting. And this little um, uh, thing right here is your proximity sensor, and that's what, so when you move your hands close to proximity sensor, that's what triggers the backlighting to come on and off. But reason number one would have to be the crown. Um, you know, this thing is really cool. It gives you a, a lot of added functionality in a, in a number of different programs, not just Photoshop, but, you know, Chrome, uh, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, Adobe Premiere, you name it. There's quite a list. And, and when we get into the options software uh, in a minute, I'll, I'll show you the list of all the programs that the uh, device will work with. And so basically the crown, it's optimized to work with a number of different programs. Um, the feel of the scissor keys uh, on the keyboard is quite nice, uh, second to none. I mean, it's it's a, essentially a chiclet style keyboard. And I just find compared to a conventional uh, keyboard that you can type so much faster using this type of keyboard. Um, there's no wires. I mean, it's essentially wireless unless, of course, you're using the uh, charging cable and uh, to, to power up the device. Um, basically, it's a wireless. Um, the option software which I mentioned and then you know using the three keys here you can switch between three different devices so it really just depends on you know how many devices you have is you, you know I'll show you a picture of my setup here but I have um, directly in front of me I've got two monitors that I use for my daytime job my YouTube channel and then directly behind me I have the day job uh, which is, uh, you know, two other monitors. So I'm always switching between a laptop, a, a tower, you name it. And then I have a MacBook Pro that uh, I can also use this keyboard with as well. So um, there's a lot of reasons why you might want to invest in something uh, like this Kraft uh, keyboard from Logitech. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what the uh, crown can do in PowerPoint. So you'll notice here that I can tap through the different functions in PowerPoint and then if I grab the dial you can see the screen changing the theme colors are changing this is going to be a real handy tool for sure there's the fonts I can scroll through a number of different fonts see exactly what they look like and there's layout theme style so I think once you get used to this crown dial it's going to be a real uh, terrific complement to anybody's uh, workflow for sure okay so let's take a quick look in Acrobat now and we'll see what the crown can do here okay so we've got horizontal scroll which isn't going to do much it'll it, it I think horizontal scroll is really going to help you in a, in a web browser like uh, Chrome or uh, Firefox but certainly zoom is going to be a benefit there you go pretty straightforward change the pages that's quite handy okay so pretty straightforward usage uh, in Adobe Acrobat okay guys so let's wrap this up the Logitech Craft keyboard uh, make no mistake this is a premium keyboard for anybody that wants to improve their productivity. Uh, I think it'll change your life. For me, just being able to switch between, you know, one machine to another to another, you've got three options there. Um, the, the added functionality that you're gaining within the different programs, especially Photoshop for me. So I'd say Photoshop, PowerPoint, you know, the browsers. Um, it's going to make a real uh, difference in your productivity. Um, I, I like the backlit keys, the way you just move your hands towards the keyboard and, and it lights up. The crown is definitely something it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but uh, I don't think it's going to take uh, much time for me to fall in love with that thing. That's for sure. I'm already enjoying it uh, <laughs> uh, more than you know. So <laughs> the quality of the keyboard, I absolutely love it. Uh, is it perfect? I don't think so, but I definitely give it 9 out of 10. Um, is it uh, worth the money? I'm going to leave that decision to you. I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, you know, Don't hesitate to connect in and tell me what you think. Um, if you have questions about the keyboard or something, maybe something that I missed, uh, yeah, don't hesitate to uh, drop me a line. 
Okay, guys, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. Uh, don't hesitate to connect in uh, if you want uh, to, you know, if you just have some questions that maybe I didn't cover in the video, I'm happy to talk directly with you. Otherwise, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe and like the video, and that'll help me bring more videos to you. And I will be doing a follow-up video on the companion mouse to the Craft Keyboard, which is the MX Master 3. And just to give you a perspective on that one, I also own the first one, which is the Performance MX. And all of these I paid for with my own money, just so you know. And I even have the second version, which is the MX Master. So stay tuned for that video, and we'll see you next time. Take care now. <laughs>